dear colleagues and friends, it's a great pleasure and honor to send you my very best wishes for the launch of the Lukasiewicz Center for Foresight and Internationalization. And please accept my apologies for not being there. I would have loved to be with you. So why do I think this launch is important and worth supporting? First of all, this center closes an important gap. I do not know the Lukasiewicz network very well, but I am embedded in the frown of society. When I look at the breadth of critical technological areas your network is engaged in, I can only conclude that any meaningful strategic development, in particular, if it is internationally oriented, needs systematic strategic intelligence and at its heart foresight. In my institute, together with two or three other Fraunhofer institutes, we do this regularly also for Fraunhofer. And this is appreciated immensely by staff in all technical institutes and by the overall leadership. It helps not only strategizing, but also community building. Second, the international exposure of your network can and should be further enhanced. This is all but trivial. For many years, we know, of course, about international production of knowledge and global value chains and so on. To better understand this and to further enhance it and the role of the Lukasiewicz network is of course critical. However, there is one more level and for Poland being at the eastern end of the EU, it is even more important. Knowledge and technology can also be anchors for stability and international integration in a more and more turbulent world. For those reasons, to link foresight and internationalization is a no-brainer. The more so, as through the new Foresight Center, you will immediately have links that have been established for decades. The list of invited speakers for this event is just one indication. For us at EASY, there are already plans to meet up with Raphael in my institute at some point and to continue the, net, the working relationship we have nurtured for many years, not just the two of us, but our respective teams. Also for us, the area east of Germany is increasingly important and this new center is a very nice hub for us. I see all kinds of collaboration, both in EU projects, but also for other partners. And of course, to strengthen the links of Fraunhofer in general and the Lukasiewicz network in the future. If I may add, the network has shown great foresight to appoint Rafael Popper to this. He, he was my close colleague for many, many years in Manchester, and it gives your network a head start in international future-oriented collaboration. I wish you, Rafael, and the entire center and the entire network all the very best. I'm confident the center will contribute to the network and to technology production in Europe more generally. Good morning. I am Luke Georgiou, Deputy President of the University of Manchester in the United Kingdom. I would like to congratulate the Lukasiewicz Research Network on the formation of the Center for Foresight and Internationalization. I understand that the Center will be focusing on three critical topics. Uh, taking the first of these, foresight, in these uncertain times, and particularly as we emerge from the pandemic, it is vital that we use the anticipatory tools and expertise available to us to guide our strategies. The second theme, uh, internationalization, is also extremely important. The grand challenges such as sustainability, health, security, and more, all cross borders. They do not respect these boundaries, and this is also true of the way we have to address their solutions. International research collaboration is vital to address them and to drive the scale and scope of the effort that we all need. The third theme, uh, knowledge valorization, or in simpler terms, ensuring that research achieves impact, is a duty to our stakeholders and those that support us. Agents such as this center form a key part of the innovation ecosystem necessary to make that happen. You are very fortunate to have my former colleague, Dr. Raphael Popper, leading this enterprise. I wish the Institute every success in the future. It's a pleasure to join you virtually uh, for the launch of the Center for Foresight and Internationalization. 
My apologies that I cannot be uh, with you in person, but every good wish uh, for the launch of the centre and for subsequent success in the centre's activities. The three pillars of the centre, namely foresight-driven research and innovation, the internationalisation of science and technology, and knowledge valorization, co-creation and sharing are three very important pillars and ones that you share with Science Foundation Ireland. As part of Science Foundation Ireland's new strategy entitled Shaping Our Future, uh, you will see that we are very concerned and interested in looking at trends in the future, in making sure that research in Ireland is supported uh, to uh, bolster those trends where we can make a contribution. And of course, as both countries are members of the European Union, there is good opportunity for us to further collaborate under the Horizon Europe programmes. I'm aware that our researchers already collaborate, but there's probably more that can be done. So a very warm invitation from me for further collaboration, both of the work of the centre and of the researchers uh, with like-minded folks in Ireland and in Science Foundation Ireland. I extend every good wish uh, for the success of your new centre. I'm delighted that you've chosen as your leader, Dr. Raphael Popper, a very distinguished international scholar in the field of foresight and someone that I've worked with both in Manchester and in Ireland. And I wish both him and the centre every success in the future and thank you for allowing me to join with you today virtually. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Matthias Weber. Uh, I'm heading the Center for Innovation Systems and Policy at AIT, Austrian Institute of Technology in Vienna. AIT is Austria's largest applied research organization with about 1,400 uh, researchers. And the Center for Innovation Systems and Policy is Austria's European hub in science, technology, and innovation policy research and foresight. We, are, we all know that we are living currently in times of high uncertainty and this means that we need to prepare better for novel and unexpected developments both in science and technology and in society but also and we've seen that in recent years in particular also in the global context. Since 2008 with the financial crisis and the Arab Spring but also more recently with the uh, COVID pandemic we have seen that the range of possible futures is not only wi widening, but that the developments are also faster than ever. Not only do we need to prepare better for these developments, but we also need to, to devise new methods in order to better anticipate these future developments in a, in a faster changing world. The case of the COVID pandemic has also shown that uh, the international div division of labor that has emerged over the past decades has uh, its ambivalencies. In particular, the vulnerabilities of our value and supply chains has come to the fore. And we can also see that there are growing international dependencies in key areas of science and technology, which is why matters of technological sovereignty are becoming more important and may well lead to a shift in emphasis in what we do in international collaboration and what we do uh, in our home base in Europe. In both regards, that means with regard to uh, international value chains and with regard to uh, science and technology cooperation and competition globally, we can only win uh, if EU member states tend, stand together and collaborate. AIT, uh, the Center for Innovation Systems and, and Policy, works very closely with the European Commission uh, in, in uh, looking ahead and thinking ahead about future challenges and also future strategies, in particular as part of its Foresight on Demand uh, research network that is collaborating with various European Commission services, and the European Environmental Agency and other in, uh, European uh, institutions. We are already drawing on an extensive network of more than 15 organizations from all over Europe. We will be very happy to collaborate also with the Center for Foresight and Internationalization in the future, in particular in our uh, European uh, projects, but also for purposes of scientific exchange on novel methods of foresight and anticipation. I can only congratulate you to the foundation of the Center for Innovation, for uh, Center for Foresight 
and uh, internationalization. And in particular, I think that with Raphael Popper, you have found an internationally outstanding figure with a lots of experience and an, and, and an extended international network that will allow you to collaborate closely with other partners like AIT and others in the endeavor of better anticipating the future, shaping um, the, 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 the future of our research and collaboration networks and thereby contributing to improving our societies and economies. Thank you very much and all the best for the future. Dear colleagues, thank you very much for this opportunity to address this short speech and my apologies for not being able to be there uh, physically with you. Our community uh, talks a lot about research and innovation and we tend to forget two other complementary activities that are very important, one upstream and another one downstream. In the upstream side, uh, we have foresight and road mapping activities. If we want to develop research with an impact, it's very important that we start from a vision where we want to be in the mid long term. And for that, foresight and road mapping activities are crucial. From that, that initial vision, we are able to derive the innovation areas and looking at the existing technologies, also identify which new technologies need, need to be developed. This is also very important for organizations that are developing uh, research in many different areas, such as the case of this network, because this allows us also to understand how these different research uh, competences uh, can be combined to develop more complex, more integrated uh, projects, addressing also uh, more sophisticated challenges. On the other side, um, uh, it's very important that we also take care of valorization and particularly uh, in the case of key enabling technologies, the te these technologies that are very horizontal of what we call cross-fertilization meaning being able to take results from his research projects that have been developed and applied, for example, in a, in a specific sector, and bring these results to other sectors, to other applications. This allows us to take full advantage of the, of, the, of the potential of these technologies, and also naturally to, take, to get more uh, results, uh, more outcome, more valorization from, this, from the same research investment. This is particularly relevant for traditional sectors and SMEs because they can develop new products, services or processes reutilizing existing technologies. So this way, these developments will be faster, cheaper and with less risk than if we have to do research from, from the beginning. At INESC, we have been working in these areas for quite a while both at national level and also at European level. And I have to thank Rafael for bringing us together and opening this opportunity for, for future collaboration. And I'm sure that under his leadership, uh, we will be able to find common areas of interest where we can develop uh, future European projects, but also where we can exchange precisely this knowledge that we both develop and find opportunities for further valorization. So I have high expectations and I'm very confident that we'll be able to find areas for future collaboration. Thank you very much for your attention. Good morning. I am Freya Windel from the Cabinet of the Secretary General in the European Parliament, Brussels. Thank you for inviting me to join the launching ceremony of the Center for Foresight and Internationalization virtually. It is an honor to be part of it. Within ESPAS, the European Institutions Foresight Network, we put strategic foresight at the center of our planning. This is crucial to have the tools to prepare for what comes next. The EU ministers of the future raise awareness about foresight. The 2021 EU Foresight Day's leitmotif was how to shape Europe's future. The Conference on the Future of Europe debates together with citizens which the next steps could be in a fast-changing world. Where will we be a generation from now? We are experiencing a global pandemic, the climate crisis, digital transformation and social inequality. The future can seem more uncertain than ever. Together, 
we can think about what kind of future we want and beyond today's cycle. The Lukasiewicz Research Network and Center for Foresight and Internationalization's three pillars build a strong foundation for that, with the first of them being foresight, a vital tool that can guide us through stormy waters, with the second focusing on internationalization. Internationalizing foresight thinking just as science and technology are key in a multinodal world, with the third being knowledge valorization, concretion, and sharing. This links to collaboration and exchange, be it across borders, across continents, amongst different generations, institutions, or societies. Dr. Raphael Popper, a distinguished international expert in the field of foresight, will guide and lead you through these pillars, helping you to always be a step ahead. We need to rise to the occasion when we are called upon. This is the decade of making. Let's do it, and let's do it together. With best wishes from Brussels, with every success for the Centre. Good afternoon. My name is Michael Keenan. I'm a senior analyst at the OECD's Directorate for Science, Technology and Innovation, where, among other things, I lead the work on the OECD's STI outlook. I've been asked today my, by my former colleague, Raphael Popper, uh, to tell you a little bit about the OECD's current work program, and in particular, how it resonates uh, with the work uh, that will be undertaken by the Centre for Foresight and Internationalization. First, it's no secret that we're facing daunting challenges that require a research and innovation response. COVID has shown us that, it's shown the promise of research and innovation that this can be realized. Uh, with previous investments and international collaborations between scientists. But also the ongoing climate emergency is another case where technology and innovation are expected uh, to, uh, to provide solutions uh, to the net zero challenge. Achieving net zero will, as we know, uh, require socio-technical transitions. Uh, so this is not just a technology push that we're talking about here. Uh, we're talking about transitions in society itself. Moreover, uh, we're also here talking about transitions of research and innovation itself and the evidence base on which uh, research and innovation policy are, are made. And I make three points here. First of all, there's considerable uncertainty around these sorts of transitions, not to mention their novelty, their complexity and their ambiguity. Tools like strategic foresight, if embedded and used continuously, can help anticipate changes and can also help identify opportunities to shape these future developments. Second point I'd make is that socio-technical transitions will necessitate partnerships and collaboration between a wider range of actors than are typically engaged today in research and innovation activities. In this regard, we'll need to uh, set up uh, and develop new platforms for co-creation for transdisciplinary research that nurture creative solutions, but also just solutions the problems that we face. And thirdly, the challenges like net zero are global in nature and they require global responses in research and innovation as well. That means that international cooperation is critically important uh, if research and innovation are going to meet the challenges of net zero. International collaboration allows us to pool our knowledge, to exchange knowledge and experiences and also to develop the absorptive capacities that will be required for successful technology transfer and technological upgrading. These are all themes that we're currently working on in the OECD in the context of a new project, which we're calling ST Policy 2025. This is a project that aims to co-create with our member governments a vision and an action plan for research and innovation policies that renders them fit for purpose in the face of challenges like net zero. But getting things right at the research and innovation policy level, of course, is important, but it's insufficient in itself. Those doing research, such as RTOs, like your, like your own, will need to implement reforms as well as part of this transitions. And this is where tools like foresight, like evaluation, co-creation processes and international collaboration would be absolutely critical. And it's really great to see that in the, in the new center, uh, for foresight and internationalization, all of these things are bundled together, which I think is really critically important. As a final remark, while the OECD mostly interacts with national governments 
It also occasionally works with organizations like, uh, like IATO. And only last week, for example, we organized a joint OECD IATO workshop where LRN President Piotr Dodzinski presented his outlook for the, for the network and its contributions to sustainability transitions. In that regard, we look forward to building on, con on uh, contacts like these as we embark on transitions. But in the meantime, I wish the Center for Foresight and Internationalization every success for the future. Thank you very much.